Solve each equation around to the nearest hundredth. That's two decimal places. Number 10, if we can get that e to the exponent by itself, it's going to be helpful. So if we can subtract 6 from both sides, 1,500 divided by 6 is 250. We could then apply natural log to both sides of the equation. On the right side, since our logarithm, natural log, has a base of e, and our argument also has a base of e, the right side just becomes the exponent. You could then divide both sides by the coefficient of t. Put that in your calculator. You get 128.41 is what t is to the nearest hundredth. Number 11, done very similar. Biggest difference between this one and number 10 is 175 does not go into 1249 evenly. So you just write it as a fraction. It gets you the e by itself. Then if you take natural log to both sides, on the right side, it's going to simplify to just the exponent, negative 0.04 t. Divide both sides by negative 0.04 t. Put it in your calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around the argument for natural log. And you get negative 49.13. Number 12 already has the log there, so the right side simplifies since the natural log and the base of e have the same base to the exponent, 0.21t. Divide both sides by 0.21t. I'm sorry, by 0.21, leave the t by itself. Your calculator will give you 9.06. Number 13, the right side once again simplifies just to the exponent. And the reason is natural log has a base of e. The argument has a base of e. So it just becomes the exponent. Divide both sides by 6.3, put it in your calculator, you get 1.05 for t. 14, once again, if you want to get the e to the exponent by itself at the beginning, it would be a good idea. You can divide both sides by 4. 1,600 divided by 4 is 400. And then natural log both sides. That's going to simplify the right side to just 0.045t, which was the exponent. Divide both sides by the coefficient of t, put it in your calculator, you get 133.14. Number 15, if you divide both sides by 5, you get 2 equals e to the 5k. Natural log both sides, then divide both sides by 5, put it in your calculator, you get k is 0.14. Number 16, the right side, since it's a natural log and the argument has a base of e, just becomes 0.031t. Divide both sides by 0 0.013. 0 0.031, rather. Put that in your calculator, you get 48.52. Number 17, if you apply natural log to both sides, the right side becomes what was the exponent. Divide both sides by the coefficient of y. Put it into your calculator, you get 42.92 for y. Number 18, the natural log on the right and the argument of e is going to cancel out and just give you the exponent. You divide both sides by 0.21, you get t by itself. Put it in your calculator, you get 17.63. Number 19, the right side simplifies to 0.21t. Divide both sides by 0.21, put it in your calculator, you get 19.52. Number 20, Mrs. Costanza invested a sum of money into a CD that pays 8% interest compounded continuously. That tells us we need to use the compounded continuous formula, which is A equals P times E to the exponent of RT. If Mrs. Costanza made this investment on January the 1st, 2009, and the account is worth $1,200 on January 1, 2013, that's four years later, what was the original amount in the account? Well, the interest rate is 0 0.08. The account after four years, $12,000, and the time it was invested was for four years. If you put those numbers into the formula, simplify your exponent, 0 0.08 times 4 is 0.32. Divide both sides by e to the 0.32 to get p by itself. 
put it in your calculator, you get $8,713.79.